Hey folks, I'm Greg from The Beer Diaries. I'm here with another episode of Pubs, Pints and Pals, today from Denver, Colorado. It is a beautiful sunny day here. We're gonna hit four places. I've got three friends with me. We're gonna try beers at each place and talk about the local Denver scene. So please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Todd Metcalf. I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I host a Twitter feed called at Brewing Colorado. It's basically the number one place where you can find all your news, beer, and culture information from breweries all over Colorado. Hi, I'm John McGarry, a writer for Denver Pros, the blog dedicated to all the news and brews in Colorado and the great people that brew them. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hensley. I'm an accountant here in Denver. I work with uh, breweries and beer-related industry, and we drink beer and we work with numbers, and it's a lot of fun. So we're headed to some of the newer microbreweries here in the Denver, Colorado beer scene, of which there's many. We're starting off today at the Denver Beer Company, a newer place, feeling a great need for great beer and a great patio here in downtown Colorado. So after the Denver Beer Company, we're heading over to Wincoop, a brewery that's most known for being started by our former mayor and current governor, Mr. John Hickenlooper. After visiting the Wincoop, we're heading over to Prost, another new kid on the block specializing in German ales and lagers. And finally, we're going to end up outside of downtown Denver in a little local neighborhood where we're going to visit Renegade, a brewery that's approaching its second birthday and brew some great ales as well. Hey folks, you've heard about the places we're going. Let's have some beer. This is a pretty amazing spot on a lovely day. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I think I, I can see a, a Denver's appeal. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, hey, good. good. How are you? Welcome to Denver Beer Co. I'm doing well. Thank awesome. You. Yeah. On this sunny, sunny day. Can I grab you guys a couple beers? Yeah, ladies first. I will try the Kaffir Lime Wheat. Kaffir Lime Wheat. Walt Weiss, please. The Walt Weiss. I'll we'll get the Graham Cracker. Porter. Yeah. And I'll get uh, the IPA. IPA? Great. Great I'll thanks. be right back. Thank you very much. Cool. Awesome, thanks. So is it, uh, are all the places this busy or is this like a... This is a hot spot because of the patio, definitely. These community tables are awesome because you meet your neighbors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. And you guys are cool at being on the show, right? Totally. Thumbs up, thumbs up, honey, thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Thumbs up, Yay. thumbs up. Awesome. But yeah, no, it, it's, it's nice. I think that's one of the things about craft beer as well. Like culture. I mean, you, you write about culture, craft beer culture a lot. I mean, there's there's such a camaraderie among craft beer fans, about people that come to places like this. It's just there's a very friendly feel. Awesome. Awesome. Delicious looking beers. Thank you. I'm very jealous of that beer. Thank you. IPA was here? IPA, and then the Graham Cracker Yeah, it's not hot at all. Thank yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. So, so cheers. cheers. It's a beautiful day. Day for drinking beer. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Perfect. Yes. So what about yours? Um, Good. It's a really solid IPA. I just had a quick quick taste. I mean, yeah, nice multi background, nice nice bitterness. The Vault Vice, you know what, if, if, what the difference with this one is with the regular Vice? Or? The Denver Beer Company loves to just rotate it and mix it up so they'll uh, there's not that many standing beers on the menu. It's always rotating and bringing in new things. And so, yeah. with the start of the baseball season, they thought that naming a beer after the local team uh, made a lot of sense. You're only just a few minutes from, yeah, from we, the baseball stadium. So right in the backyard of, uh, of the baseball stadium. Right. And the Cafe or Lime one, must, I mean, that seems like a really, do you get a lot of lime in it? Or? It's almost like a light limeade beer. I don't know, it's very good. It's, uh, it's very refreshing in the sun. So. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 really tasting. That one is actually a special, special beer, isn't it? It is. You know, it's, it's the Graham Cracker, and the reason why I got this one, to be completely honest with you, is I think it kind of embodies the Denver Brew Company, because the names of their beers almost invite people who may not be craft beer fans to kind of come in and try something different, because I feel like if you name a beer Graham Cracker, you're probably going to expect your palate to be ready for something that might taste like a Graham Cracker, yeah, so I yeah. feel it, it's very inviting. That beer, um, that was a medal winner, wasn't it? It was. When did it, what did, do you remember when it won? I think, was that 2011? 2011, that sounds right, yeah. Their first year that they were a brewery. And they got a third place, I believe. They got a gold. gold. It was a gold? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. How long have you been running your blog for? How, how long has that been going on? Uh, I've been running the blog about six months. Really try to focus on what's new, what's going on in the Colorado, especially the Denver beer scene. Uh, really love to get to know the culture and the, the people that are making the beer. People don't realize there's more to brewing, more than having a brewery than just beer. There's business and you know accounting and all these things. And so you actually work with some of the breweries and like you said, some of the other liquor companies. Yeah, I have, I have several breweries. 
companies I work with, and then um, several booze-related people. I have um, several booze blogs and event planning businesses that I um, help out. In Denver, the beer industry, or the booze industry in general, is very tight-knit. So yeah. once you know one of them, they kinda, you kind of get to know everybody. For me, it started, I went to college in Fort Collins. Which, which is some crazy beer. If you're not a beer drinker, you better soon become one, otherwise we're going to be completely left out. So it's been a passion. I think about a year or so ago, I started up my Twitter feed. I'm at Brewing Colorado, and it's had some pretty good success. And I try to just focus on events, news, culture. If there's new releases, um, anything anybody else should be looking up, looking out for. And so, how many, are there still a lot of breweries opening up here? There's probably 15 to 20 in planning in Denver, just across, in Denver, just in Denver, across the state. And easily, at least 100 I know of that are in planning. Wow. The state really goes out of their way uh, to make it easy, at least relative to other places, to get licensed and to get started up. That's the the biggest part about Colorado is that camaraderie and the beer industry that it'll, it'll just continue to grow for who well, knows you, how long. You've also got a population of people who are knowledgeable about beer, who really like beer. Really? Yeah, very, very involved. And so um, I think that's a great advantage Colorado has. I would love to try it. I mean, that looks, I mean, I love It's really good. It's not too oh, it's limey. Really fragrant, though, very floral. I love the few limes. too perfumey, is why I like it. Would you want to add a lime to it to spritz it up? I think it might be too much if you did. That's called Bud Light Lime. <laughs> I'm going to try yours. You Go try ahead. <laughs> this is the part of the show where you try each other's beers. <laughs> I, don't, I don't share mine, so. <laughs> I'm gonna try yours again. All right. Because yours is All really, right. this All is right. really good. Right. You come here and got a growler of that and made broth and soaked broths in it. Oh, makes really? a very, yeah, very yeah, good broth. Really? Yes. Well, uh, I have three, four broths. <laughs> yeah. Where are those at? No, no, just throw them in the brew kettle and we'll just fish them out. That's just a, that's a really lovely beer. I mean, I can see why I want. Wind Coop. I mean, we talked about it at the outset. I mean, you know, it, it, it was really one of the, that, that brewery that got Lodo, lower downtown, started, right? In 1988. Lodo used to be the slums. It was not not a very happy place to walk around. So I think Wind Coop, with their development, a bunch of entrepreneurs, and like we said earlier, John Hickenlooper, he's former he's like, mayor and governor. Yeah. I mean, it's blown up, and it's almost an institution within Denver. I think we're almost done. There. I, I think we're so I'm thirsty. We gotta, we gotta get rolling. So. You know, in some ways, I think the, the breadth of beer is broader than wine. Like, I actually have, uh, I, I, I am agree quite with a, I totally agree with historically that. was have quite a wine collection, and I'm very familiar with wine. And I went actually from wine to beer when I discovered just how beer was much broader. And to the point where actually I have trouble tasting wine now. Like, I'll try wine, I go, okay, where's the hops tack that you <laughs> yeah. look for, right? That's why it's it's so exciting for craft breweries and stuff because they're coming out with a Cicerone now. Yeah, you know, instead yeah. of the Salmonier, you know, and, and that's a new exciting program that's kind of coming out yeah. fresh we and new. Where actually, one here in Denver. yeah, exactly. So you go to a nice restaurant, you're like, what beer goes with this food instead of a wine? And I think that's that's fantastic well, for great. all the breweries and stuff in town. Remember when we were at, at Funkworks? I mean, it was very interesting because those guys were talking about the fact that they're really trying to design beers that also go, not just taste great, but go well with food. And people don't appreciate yeah. how great beer is at pairing pair with foods. I mean, wine has all these like kind of holes that you can't pair with. Like, it's always funny because everyone jokes about, what wine do you eat with asparagus? And all of a sudden the sommeliers look kind of like, I'm <laughs> good. <Asparagus. laughs> Choices, huh? Holy cow! So these are all the in-house beers, which is a pretty, pretty impressive setup. Hey guys, how's treat. it going? Hey, how are you? Hi. Good. My name is Bess. I'm a brewer here. Awesome. Uh, so, what uh, seasonals or special beers do you have on? Um, right now, the really cool one we have is my pet project. Actually, it's called Elegance or Sweet Lady Beer. It was a collaboration with about seven different breweries, eight different ladies, oh, and wow. dry hopped Belgian brown ale. I can't actually have that one. I'm just. <laughs> Come on, Greg. I will have a sweet lady beer. Fantastic. I'll get the Colo Rojo. Great choice. One of my a, favorite beers we make. I, didn't, I swear I didn't roll my R, but it's pretty good for a Canadian Colo village. Rojo. Rojo. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> How about you guys? What do you think I'll do the uh, Rocky Mountain Oyster Stout. Ballsy choice. It is. <laughs> I'll take the Osso Mile High IPA. Fantastic. I'll be right back right, with those. Thank you. Thank you. 
Do you guys come here very often? Is this something that, I mean, as a tourist, beer tourist, it's a must place. I mean, for, for Denver folks. Without question. Uh, it's a great place. I mean, they have this whole upstairs area is filled with pool tables and shuffleboard tables. It's like the stuff. biggest pool hall in Denver or something like that, I think. It probably I is. think so. That's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah, probably is. All right. All right, here Pardon we go. Me real quick. Thank you. Whew, some nice looking mirrors. Yes. All That's right. Nice. Ball stuff you. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Looks ballsy. Color rojo. Color rojo. Uh, sweet lady beer. Thank you. That's quite dark for a sweet lady beer, isn't it? And mile high. She's a Thank little you. mysterious. Oh, yeah. Well, we're yeah. going to give you these back. I mean, Thank before you. we distract us with all these awesome <laughs> Enjoy. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. All right, cheers. So cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Well, one thing I know is, I mean, Wink does a lot of like support stuff. Like, I mean, public, I mean, like sort of charities, and there's also the the Mountain Gorilla um, support with the Silverback yep. beer, for example. It's just yeah, it's a really admirable kind of kind of philosophy to sort of give back to the community like that. It's really really yeah. cool. Wink hosts the Pints for Prostates <clears throat> event, which brings out uh, it's a fundraiser, obviously, but they bring out um, really specialty. Uh, limited release beers um, that they do and bring the brewers out for those events and they do that during GABF week so lots of neat events like that. Obviously I think that, that amazing thing of uh, Mr. Hickenlooper was the entrepreneur that started it. Eventually went on to become the mayor and eventually went on and he's currently the governor right? Currently the governor. Yep. Yep. Perhaps part of the source of favorable beer laws. I mean it's wonderful to have that kind of political support. I think uh, Mr. Hickenlooper understands the value that the Colorado brewers bring to the economy, whether it's the jobs and just the beer tourism in general that comes here. What do you think of GABF? I mean, how many people How many people show up? Yeah. Like tens of thousands of people come to the city yes, for GABF. Yeah. Sells out faster than like a Justin Bieber concert. <laughs> and it's not just the event. There's stuff going on all over the city during that week. You sure. can come to lots of restaurants and bars, do special tappings, and there's all sorts of just fun events in town. So how are you all enjoying the beers? What's what's yours tasting like? What's, uh, what's, what's that one like? You know, I think I want to have you go ahead and taste it first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Breaking vegetarian laws, please don't, please don't see this. It's very smooth. It's actually pretty tasty. It's good. It is. It's nice You've stuff. got some on your chin there. Yeah. Stuck <laughs> one in the arms. I was actually seeing my cousin the other day, and he had a two-pack. He's like, I don't understand why they give it out and sell it as a two-pack. And I was like, oh, well, think for half a second, yeah. right? Like, so I just think it's super clever. I just think it, it speaks to just crap. It would be worse if they had a bomber and a two-pack. Like, that'd, that'd, yeah. that'd be the horrible. Yeah, horrible but it's very good. It's very good. And the Mile High is the, uh, probably an American style. I'd say it's definitely an American style. Yeah. Um, a lot of hop flavor up front, both in the uh, the bitterness and the aroma too. This is my favorite way to drink an IPA, so I love it. Yeah, super tasty. And you have the elegance, the sweet, sweet lady beer. Sweet lady beer, so which the ladies did really well. It's yeah, very yeah. good. It's a tiny bit sweet. It's so not. Like, is the finish like a? Little... Um, it's it's a light finish for a dark beer. I'm, I'm tempted to. Might I try a little? Go for I, I'm it. tempted. I, I've been thinking about the sweet lady beer the whole time. Yeah, I've been here. I think the, the sweetness ladies. refers to the the ladies that made it, not the beer itself. Yeah. It's got a nice so. note. You've had some balls in your mouth. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing all kinds of things. I, I never thought I'd be doing these things here in Denver. Like, well, that's really nice. Really, really super drinkable. Yeah, try it. Yeah. Imperial Reds are one of those styles, I think, that have just sort of really started appearing pretty aggressively. I think it kind of seemed to occur when people were making, you know, very, very malt heavy beers, but then also throwing a ton of hops in. We're talking about uh, Governor Hickenlooper now. Yeah. Um, what's neat about him is I've seen him around town and you see him sitting at a booth having a meeting with somebody and he's got a beer in front of him. And you mentioned, I think one of you guys mentioned the Beer Drinker of the Year competition. I uh, saw yes. that and I thought that was, how does one qualify? <laughs> it's actually a very serious uh, competition wherein the, the, the finalists are flown into town. Um, they meet on a Saturday and there's a panel of judges. I think there's some celebrity judges and other and judges. So what, well. what are they judging on as a beer drinker? It really comes down to your knowledge of all things beer, whether it's ingredients, tradition, styles. I think there's a tasting element that's involved as well. And they really just grill you for several hours, almost <laughs> like uh, your boards for med yeah, school or something. I was going to say, it's probably like, almost like and people are sweating bullets it's, and it's drinking extremely, beers. And, it's extremely competitive, but the prize is beer drink of the year, which is very prestigious. I think you get a lifetime free beer at this location or wow. at, at, uh, with the Wincoop Company. So it's uh, it's something I aspire to win someday, well, but yeah, I've I, got a lot of miles to go yeah. before, uh, before I can take on those kind well, of... Well, I think Pubs, Pints and Pals, I mean, again, it's really interesting thinking about how we set the show up because you go, okay, well, let's check out the places to have a beer. You look at Denver, and there's 50. I yeah. mean, it, 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 like, I'm not joking. Like, it, it's it's like, know. it's insane. A lot of those, as you noted, a lot of those smaller tap rooms, um, 
they, they don't have their own food, but what they really do have is a lot of beers you can't normally get. And that's that's actually the thing that I, I think as part of the Beer Diaries show that we've been just blown away by is um, the experimental stuff. That, I think you can get that. You can, this is canned in bottles. Yeah, and I mean, it started out as a joke. Anyway, on April Well, actually, yeah, we didn't talk about this yet. That's actually, yeah. I mean, that's a great story. Yeah, right? I mean, on April Fools, they came out with the Rocky Mountain Oyster Stout, and everybody's like, oh, ha, 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 and then it became What, what is the Rocky Mountain Oyster? Uh, bull's testicles. <laughs> I <tried that> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's just a, another great example of the experimental beers that come out and oh, actually yeah. catch fire just because someone yeah, was like, yeah. "Oh, this would be so, a good kind of it. kind of a joke." The question I had for you guys is, how popular is Coors still in Colorado? Like, I mean, I remember, like years ago, it was like you know Rocky Mountain Springwater beer. They had all these kind of like sort of real positive images of it, and and had a friend's father who drank it religiously. He would import it. Um, Today, it's still probably pretty popular. Outside of Colorado, it's still a much bigger deal because people used to call like my parents, be like, hey, can you get me some Coors and bring it out here? People love it outside of Colorado, but it is hard and you feel very out of place if you were to come to a place like Wincup and be like, can I get a Coors? They'd probably slap you. you know, that would like be the right thing you to do. You can get a bad reaction depending on where you're at. If you, if well, you I can imagine. That. But uh, I think if we as beer craft beer people take a step outside of ourselves, I mean, the reality is they still sell a ton of beer. Absolutely. When I go to baseball games, I will drink a Coors Light or Absolutely. a Coors Bank yes. when I'm at a baseball game because, yeah. I don't know, it just... It's going well together. together. Yeah. It's course field after all. Yeah. While a lot of craft folks will kind of rail and be unhappy and, and, and against the big guys, I mean, you really think about something like Blue Moon, it is a gateway beer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Totally. My wife totally started out on Blue Moon yeah. and then when, once she discovered an IPA, it was like, whoa, but that wouldn't happen without a beer like Blue Moon. The, the one thing that I don't like, and I think probably a lot of craft beer fans really don't like, is the fact that there's sort of devious practices around the branding element. So hiding the fact of who actually, yeah. like I mean, if you make sure. this great beer, be proud of it. Craft brews can still be proud at the fact that the big guys have now looked down at the small guys and say they know what's going on. They do. They need it's, to it's, tap it's, that market. There's a little bit of danger around um, the marketing muscle that the big guys can, like they can kind of co-opt the mainstream. The good thing is we all exist. And I think also craft beer fans are very motivated and, and, and very energetic about protecting you know, craft beer. So okay. my question would be, you said the word gateway. My gateway beer personally was 1554 from New Belgium. Mm. Love Black it. Black lager. That's Still a, love it. It's interesting to hear that. What is everyone else's gateway beer? I had Odell's Easy Street. That's yeah. all we had in college. Probably it's high between uh, either Boston Lager or Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Still drink that beer today. I had a Victory Storm King with my friend five Ooh, years ago. Yeah. And it just hit me in the head like a sledgehammer. <laughs> and I was like, this craft beer stuff's pretty awesome. Next thing we're going to... Post. I will warn you, some of their bigs come, their beers come in very large glasses. Oh, the, there's like one liter? I accept your warning and I think I see it as a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I love about beer, just at a very high level, it's very democratic. Um, you, know, you can true. generally afford the most expensive beer available. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. you know, some of them are a little expensive. I mean, you know, people, for, like, you know, appropriately wince at a, uh, you know, $30 beer. But I mean, no, seriously, I mean, no, no, I agree with you. wine, you're like, $30 wine, that's not even mid-level. Like, that's, that's kind of like just about the low level of wine. Yes. Yeah. And, and wine, um, both availability but also price, actually pre like, makes it unavailable to most people. Like, very true. Thou I mean, who's going to drink a $1,000 bottle of wine? Like for dinner, right? Like, I mean, come on. Excellent. Very traditional feel here, actually. Absolutely. It's wood table. Traditional German beers. Hi, guys. Oh. Welcome to Prost. Hey. How are we? We are swell. So what, uh, what do you guys have on? What's, uh, what are the beers we should be aware of? So we have three base, our three standards. We have the Pils, the Weiss beer, and the Dunkel. Pils is just a nice pale lager. Weiss beer is a unfiltered wheat, and the Dunkel is an amber lager. I'll do the Weiss beer, please. Weiss? Same for me. Weiss? Pils. Pils. All right. We're in a cross-tail battle. It's a All few. right. Yeah, Let thanks. me grab those for you guys. Well, you were talking about traditions earlier, and they actually use uh, copper kettles here. Uh, which were actually made in 1963, but they bought them from a, uh, another brewer uh, in Germany, named oh, wow. Humer, 
that have been brewing beer for over 350 years, since 1642. So basically you could say that the tradition and the precedent has already been set. All right, Speaking guys. of which, yeah. Awesome. One vice, oh, one pills. I think we got the better deal, I'm not gonna lie to you. Is it gonna volume? Yeah, well, I think it's like whipped cream right here. I think it's it's all the traditional glassware. So traditional glassware. If it was glassware. served in Germany, it would be served in a pills glass. Yeah. Let yeah. me know if I can get you anything. Yeah, else. thanks very much. Really You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Is it in my mustache? It's probably my mustache. <laughs> yeah, how am I looking? Beautiful. <laughs> it's good for on camera. It's pretty hoppy, huh? It's very hoppy for the style. Taste some banana. I hope that, so. Picking up the that, banana. The light there. banana caramel finish. I really appreciate that they take the effort to serve the beer in the proper glass too. I think that yeah. a lot of a lot of places get lazy with that shaker pint. That's easy to stack and cheap to buy, but um, I think it really adds to the whole experience. A lot of yeah. people don't even know that they have different glasses for the beers that they're supposed to go in different ones. Yeah. It's about the aromatics and the tasting, and um, it's, it's great to see somebody that's sticking to that. It's always amazing having you know German beer outside Germany, especially when someone nails it. I mean, these guys are nailing yeah. it. Like, and for folks uh, in the beer knowledge, I mean, the Brewers Association's based there. Charlie Papazian, the sort of one of the fathers of home brewing, I believe, still based there. I think is he still, yes. he still lives there. And so he's you know the joy of home brewing is one of the most important books in, in the yeah. world of brewing, uh, which he wrote. And Brewers Association, of course, is, is the organization that represents craft brewers and super. You know, they, they run the Great American Beer Fest, the Craft Brewers Conference. I mean, they're a wonderful organization, um, supporting the traditions and, you know, really doing a great job for, for craft beer. But we talked about the, you know, some of the traditional details that they've went through, whether it was the copper kettles and bringing the brew house over from Germany. I think one of the other cool things that they they did here was this table they have in the corner. They call it a stump dish. And so what's, it's, what's the tradition of the stump yeah, dish? Yeah, so having been to Germany to experience it firsthand, as I understand it, a stump dish loosely translates to um, this is where the locals sit, and so when you go to these villages, it's kind of a hangout place. Yeah, like the hangout. So you've got dish. these villages that have all these little taverns and things, and you show up, and your neighbors and other guys from the village are hanging out there, and you just slide in, and everyone sort of hangs out. And so it's are you saying there's sort of a drinking tradition in Germany? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Might be. <laughs> Another tradition that's coming up is May first. So May first, mm. they're doing the Maypole. So that's historically in. Um, uh, Bavaria, they have a maypole festival. They're actually going to put it, figure out how to affix it <laughs> like to the friends. They're really tall, right? And so they, I think, and uh, there's like, like celebrations around that. And of course, there's a Maybach available. So oh, they're gonna yes. have to, yeah, and I mean, it's like, oh, painful because I think it's, it's, up, it's <laughs> yeah. on in a few days. But yeah, Maybach would be real. I mean, obviously, another traditional seasonal German beer style. I'll come back because I'm not sure I've had one before. Actually, no, you can go, you can go back there and try and get a straw. <laughs> like, Willy Wonka style. Well, I always imagine like doing like you know going to the bright tank and just kind of like I mean we, we've had again on the show had the great fortune of someone oh you want to try that here I'll pour it right off the bright yes. tank we just finished carbonating it and it's like freshest of the freshest of yeah. like that happened to me one time when I was like oh, I didn't really get as much citrus in this IP and the guy runs off <laughs> <laughs> here try this it's right right out of the, I go yeah now I got it goes so let's right off the bright tank so how do you keep good. drinking beer once you go bright tank I don't think you can ever go back right I mean I think you know beer goes through a lot of again if you make it I think it goes through a lot of processes. Uh, a lot of things happen before you before it's done. Oh, a lot of beer. There. It's a lot of beer. I'm ahead of everybody. It's, it's, yeah, you're, 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 you've been winning. We've, you've been like winning the race almost every time. I think. That's been my goal. He thinks there's a prize. <laughs> I think you I'm alluded so. to a prize. I'm hoping you're gonna have a nice pair of later hosen for me. No, actually, the, the <laughs> prize. <laughs> Rocky Mountain Oyster Sandwich. <laughs> so we're almost done, and we're going to roll to another place. We're going to Renegade next. Yep. Complete opposite in terms of their their mindset. Well, the name would give you an in, an in <laughs> towards, like, yeah. just, but do they know yeah. their schnitt? <laughs> do they know their schnitt? <laughs> All right. friend group, are there any people who still drink like Coors Light and stuff like that? Everybody I'm friends with, I try very hard well, sometimes, to you get know, them to try new things, yeah. just because I think they're missing out. Yeah, yeah and this could, there's... I think if, it's kind of, I think we've mentioned it before, there's, it's kind of like a wine thing where people are hesitant to maybe get into craft brews because it's like, well, it's complicated and I just want, you know, what I'm familiar with. Yeah, it's easy. But if you can relate those flavors and tell them what they should taste. You take a, a new person to craft beer in any brewery here and the first thing they ask them, what do you like? Yep. And they won't. If you say you like Coors Light, the first thing they're not going to hand you is an Imperial IPA. They're yeah, going to yeah, hand you yeah. a Pilsner. They really do want to help people understand what, what beers they should be drinking. And a good part of the culture, too, is that it's, I think it's really important to not um, be snobby about it. They want it to be approachable, and they want people to come back, so they make an extra effort to say, give this a try, and they don't want to be, well, if you don't like it, you're, you're not worthy. Well, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I think the, the, the tap rooms in town do a great job of being approachable that way. Yeah. We will now uh, get renegade-like. See if they know their schnit. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Last yeah, stop of the day. This is a great place. I mean, this this place is, is pretty pretty amazing. Actually. It really embodies, I think, a lot of the, the new brewery movement, where you've got this really organic neighborhood spot. Yeah, I mean, they've won best neighborhood brewery, best ambiance, and best new brewery in 2013. So. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hey, great. Good. How are you? Great. Good. Thank you. I'm Jim Ball. Welcome to Renegade. Do you guys have any questions about our beers? I'm just kind of like curious what you got. Like, I mean, in terms of like you know, sort of. Big grand finale Belgians, anything you'd recommend? You're in luck. I have a Belgian quad. It's called the Upstander. It's nice and malty, got a medium body, dark in color, awesome. pretty finish. That's that's dead on for me. Upstander for you? Yeah. Since the end of the day, I'll get the five o'clock. Excellent. <laughs> I'm thinking of righteous, because it's righteous been a righteous day. day. Yeah. I like it. It's been righteous today. There's snow in the forecast, give me the hammer and sickle. <laughs> I'll be right See, back, guys. Russian Imperial Stout. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're shifting back to the winter beers and you, you gotta mentally not let yourself as a Denver resident get too much into summer because it's not quite here yet. Well it sounds like you guys know the beers here pretty well so I mean there are any interesting stories around them or any kind of kind of cool things like well the righteous that I ordered yeah. it has recently gone through a little legal battle oh you're kidding the name of it is no longer technically righteous it is now called redacted and called redacted redacted to change the name another brewery had a beer named righteous yeah. and notified these guys that they should change their name so they just drew a big black line through the word righteous <laughs> and wrote redacted below it on their new can new breweries open all the time there's such a explosion going on that you're gonna bump heads and run into totally. some of those issues. And so they had fun with it. Yeah. 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 Make the puns happen. Thank you. Here is your five o'clock. Thank you. Grand finale, absconder for you. The absconder. And the hammer and sickle. Enjoy you guys. Yes, thank you. Cheers. 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 Last stop. Last stop. Yes. And, we're, and we're going big this one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you know, talking about the topic of beer and beer naming, like you know, there's a sort of tradition of like Doppelbox being Ator, you know, um, Weizenbox being Oos, like Primus, Vidus. These guys, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. And really, that's what Colorado beer is about. I mean, I think you'll find a lot of breweries have that same attitude towards it where they're not looking through the BJCP, the, the yeah, beer judging yeah, yeah. Uh, style guides. They're trying to find out what they want to make. It's about what local ingredients do we have, yeah. who's our audience, and let's make beer we want to drink. How are your beers? How are you enjoying them? Fantastic. Roasty. Big, warm alcohol uh, on the stout, which is exactly what you want, so this is a great finish. And the Righteous is an IPA here. IPA with a tiny hint of sweet and even a back tongue dryness. Okay. It's really good. It's a rye IPA as well, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. And I mean, you? She, she described it very well. It's, it's, a, it's a lighter ale, but it's got a, a nice depth of flavor that kind of keeps you in that same craft beer mode. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It yeah. turns to your palate and what you can get on top of it. Yeah, and this one, I mean, this smooth. one, they, they have a quad. I mean, sometimes they get very sweet, very cloying, and yeah. also very heavy. Not not heavy, but I mean, you, there's weight there, um, but you get a lot of dark fruit, and it's still a sweet beer. I mean, I, I have some toffee coming out of the bowl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, let me, let me try again. <laughs> So back on the legal position of beer, it's been funny. This this is just the most recent legal battle of over beer lately. Um, not too long ago, Strange Brewing was in a legal battle with Strange Homebrew Company. So there's a lot of people copying off each other, but that's why it's interesting that this came to fruition. That there's this legal issue with Strange Brewing and the Homebrew yeah, Shop. Yeah. Which... Or it's like Avery's collaboration instead of litigation, which is a delicious beer. It's a delicious beer and it's a smart idea. It's it's, yeah. it's kind of like. When did they both have a salvation? Was that what it was? Yes. I think it was. Yeah, and so they both, you know, with, with Russian River and went, hey, let's be friends. And I think that's actually one of the cool things is sort of showing, showing that you can kind of, you know, kind of go arm in arm and actually collaborate. And so, I mean, like, the, the beers here are all immense. Like, I mean, we, you know, I looked I, on the list there, there's like a, a, a triple IP, and not yeah. triple, but triple, but like an IPA cubed or super did, double imperial. I did taste that. It's very delicious, but it's deceiving. It's 11 something percent. 11.2 <laughs> yeah. percent, and I it'll sneak up on you, I would I've say. I haven't heard of many IPAs that big. Like, that's, that's a well, damn big. I mean, really, we talked about it. This is a neighborhood brewery that's got houses across the street. 
You see dogs and bikes everywhere. It's a place that you can walk to, so big beers fit well. <laughs> well, yeah, I know the funniest thing about here, like, I mean, you, it's a little hard to tell, like, where we're sitting, but there's, like, about five dogs in here. Oh, yeah. And then, and then earlier there was a spill. I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure where it came from. There's some kind of spill. The funniest thing was these guys set the dogs on it. <laughs> and then Problem they're, solved. And they're like, Ugh. you know, like the classic sort of. That was my intention the whole well, time. Well, no, it was. I mean, the dogs were. I mean, you're, they're your best friends, and that, now see, they're now they're now they're drunk. You can see over there that that guy there. He's passed out. He's, he's, he's like, get him out of here. <laughs> well, I mean, now that we've come almost all day through a bunch of breweries, a lot, a lot your, of beer. Your thoughts Sunday, now? Sunday in of the Colorado brew atmosphere. It, you know, it's 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 inspiring. I don't have any way other to describe it. Someone who loves craft beer, loves craft beer scene, seeing you know tap rooms filled with people, seeing like just the amount of enthusiasm, the amount of beer, the variety of beer. I mean, it, it just it blows me away. Like I, I mean, clearly one of the best beer cities in the world. Here we we went to a German style brewery, a brewery that made balls beer. <laughs> well, you know, just creative like graham cracker porters, and now just over the top aggressive, you know, really well done big high alcohol beers like I mean and actually great beers of all types so it's, it's like you know it's awesome you guys are privileged very much so to live here spoiled I, feel I think it's a better word yes, yes. so to Colorado to Colorado to Colorado yeah. awesome precision lots of practice it's very, very good. good thank you so much for being here thanks for having us Pubs, Pints and Pals this was a great day signing off Greg from the Beer Diaries